to show you like watercolor process, a bit of my watercolor process. Um, I might switch to some pre-sketched um, stuff from the same place. So um, depending on my, my time management. Mm -hmm. So prepared. Just imagine you could do that on location, just like push, <laughs> push a button and like just you're yes. at the end of your line drawing and get to do exactly that no, that but, would be great no yeah. but it's of course a very smart thing to do for your demo because your line work is of course very intricate and takes a while i'm so slow that's what you want to say that's but that's true <laughs> no, actually i mean some people are fast sketches some take more time but i think your your drawings are pretty amazing so um, yeah Good things. But I also time. like um, you. I don't think you share those very often on Instagram, but I know you can sketch quickly. I know that. I've seen the drawings in your sketchbooks. Like yeah, when you I... do like those doodled portraits that you sometimes do, those are fan fantastic too. But yeah, as I said before, if you, if you just have a limited uh, amount of time, like a few minutes or so, I can really you know, try to focus on the whole thing and then grab it in an, in an instant and be really fast and um, draw more or less a bit blind. Um, so you don't waste your time looking too much um, at what you're doing there. And this is okay. And what I'm doing right now is also um, forcing myself to speed up um, by using a pen, which is not the normal size I'm using. I'm using a super fine pencil. So, and this is the next uh, tip of uh, tip it's size. Thicker nip, yeah. Yeah, thicker nip. So I can. I'm forced to leave out all the mini details, and um, speeds the thing a bit. I hope so. But um, after ten minutes, if anybody, please tell me it's ten minutes. Um, I can okay. decide what. Um, which uh, sketch uh, I go go on with for the watercolor? Okay. Yeah. How do you choose where to start your drawing usually? Um. Usually, I do um, something which which then determines the the rest of the, the scale. You know, like. And I'm drawing the, the, the front door. I have a, I can adjust the, the rest of um, the elements around it. And another thing is here, it's not so difficult because it's um, direct view of, um, to, to an object, but if it's got some perspective, um, of course, I choose the, the nearest um, thing, which is the nearest to me, to my perspective and go from that. Um, Back, backwards so I'm not um, messing up with with some some levels behind it and sometimes I just go with the the elements I really really love to, to sketch so I don't I don't wait to uh, to start with with um, an element I really enjoy making so let's start with that mm. It's so nice to watch other people sketch. Watching television. Yeah, but it's very calming, I think. Yeah. I th also think it's super interesting because, uh, yeah, you you started like with the edge of the house and then, then went to the door and then you drew some brickwork and some, yeah, it's like you draw a bit of the big shape but then you went straight to some details and then you added another line of a big shape and it's like very much switching between the big stuff and the details you think that's very very funny as you yeah. mentioned it yes you're right and sometimes 
it can cause me trouble because when you start with a big shape and then you mess up with uh, the scale of the rest, um, you need to extend uh, your big shape. But um, that's also can be very nice that you just, um, you know, add on to your, your beginning. So and I don't really mind a line which doesn't look nice or which is drawn over a line, another line. So I just um, go over it and yeah, my English is gone, but incorporate it, just, you know, melt it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of the process. It's very cool to see your thought process through your line work here. As to the roof, um, well, it's blurred, obviously, so I have to invent, but I think in the uh, more leftish view, um, there were some details, so it's not all made up what I'm doing here. Do you have an idea where your love from like abandoned and these gritty and rusty building, where, where does it come from? I mean, I share that love and I have no idea where it comes from, but I don't know. wondered I don't if know. you knew. No, if you don't know, if you haven't got an idea, it's just, it's just, I think it's, I like the form so much, you know, it's so, there is no straight line. So um, it's much more interesting than, um, than a, a new built house. I don't know, and 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 those places tell stories. I mean, that's that's what it's mostly about. I think um, I can imagine. I can wander through it and imagine who lived there or what happened to the house, um, how how it might have looked when it was not in such an such a state of ruin. So it's much more interesting. Yeah, to sit there and, and yeah 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 right like some places are just like steeped in in history yeah even in small histories but yeah mm -hmm. and so much texture yes this one is so full of textures There's like graffiti on it. Yeah, it looks straight out of your your drawing already. Yeah, I think when, when we talked about uh, inviting you as a demo artist, I was like, th the first thing that came to mind was like, okay, Jörg is going to do some rusty stuff. Or some, <laughs> something with texture. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I'm a one-trick pony. You can, you can tell it <laughs> no, like it is. No, you're not. Please. I think you, you would have also enjoyed cars, but I already did that one, so. So you can... Yeah, you, you you can do that much better than than me. And nah, come on. So and cars have like, I mean, cars is is also old cars, rusty cars, um, really interesting stuff. Also new newish looking old timers, or retro cars as well. But they have like, they require some attention to symmetry somehow and um, so it does take more 
of your attention to to get things right otherwise you will have like a messed up whatever thing thingy at the end um so um with houses is just you have a symmetry and you have repetitions of ar architecture architectural elements which you can rely to and with a car if you if you mess up the front light or um, the position of uh, the front window whatever it's difficult so um mm. this is a for me is always um a really fun thing to do but um as i mentioned before you have i at least i have to have a good day and uh, a lot of patience and attentiveness for for the details and for the symmetry and stuff so not every day is a car day for me mm -hmm. so you've been going about 10 minutes i didn't okay notice exactly when but yeah it's about 10 minutes yeah usually um 25 minutes is the demo standard demo time so just so you know but but i think you got quite far in 10 minutes because yeah, you've already got a lot of detail in there. Yeah, I, I tried, to, tried to speed up. Um, <laughs> it's hard but, when you're talking. So it's up to you. You can, you can just tell me. I have um, done this yesterday um, to be prepared, as I said. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, this is probably like 20 just minutes. just time traveled there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get out of the oven. That's it. That's yeah. a good thing with uh, uh, the virtual journey. So you can always come back and um, be yeah. there. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll take this as my um, as my ground for the watercolor. Okay. And I would rather need the time, uh, use the time um, for letting some areas dry up um, a mm -hmm. bit, and um, instead of drawing more and. Um, yeah, sure. I think it's uh, so you have like three watercolor cases there. Is it like three yeah. different palettes? Yeah. <laughs> it's because more is more. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a um, how do you say that? It's not um, it's not healthy because I, I I tend to to collect things. You know, colors. And I fall in love with uh, new tones of colors and uh, new effects that colors give me. So I collect them, but then I end up with using just one or two or three colors in this <laughs> whole row, probably. Yeah. So normally this is my equipment um, that I'm traveling with. Mm -hmm. So two. those those two, yeah. And this is just being posh and you know having uh -huh. stuff. You're so posh. You're so posh. <laughs> Showing You're off. Posh treatment. Yeah. I also love like the composition you did there. Like I really like the house more on the right side. And then just that little fence. Yeah. Like, taking up the lower left corner and just like leaving so much white space there. Yeah. It's, it's just it's such an effective composition. This this happens with more time, you know, uh, when I have the time to think things through. But um, nevertheless, I sometimes I end up with, you know, choosing, having chosen the right, totally wrong place of um, to start with or having, you know, mess, messed up the um, proportions. So I end up in some corner of my book having space where I don't need it. But uh, this this thing here is is quite how I wanted it, actually. It's a good off-center composition for that very centered view. And I assume you're just wetting the, the building area. Yeah, exactly, water. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also an interesting choice to not do any detail on the street or sidewalk. It's the very classic Jorg, um, like isolated building composition. Yeah. Yeah. It is so clean. Making a brown from burnt sienna. This is burnt. Yeah, exactly. This is um no, this is raw sienna. 
and um, uh, ultramarine blue. Classic combination. Exactly. Wow, it's so dark. <laughs> but it will dry much lighter, right? That's that's one thing, and the other thing is I can still lift uh, things up because it's wetted, pre-wetted. So I have all the possibilities to um, work into it. So. Um, Sometimes when I'm beginning too light with the color, I, I, I really miss the, the pigment. And the more pigments you throw on it, the more uh, effects there uh, can be. So, so are the, the watercolors you're using, are they granulating? Um, yeah, I try to really... Um, choose the ones who are mm -hmm. and collect them. So this this here is mostly granulating color. And those are the mixture of colors who, are, who have a granulation by themselves. And those colors here are um, Daniel Smith colors, which are um, set up to have more granulation and more pigments in them so that mm. you get more effect out of it. Okay, there's a question in the chat and to the entire group, feel free to ask your questions. And uh, Jenny is asking, uh, may I ask what brush your uses? So what kind of brush is that? Is that? I'm using this brush for the first time. It's like a gas decker. It's um, mm -hmm. an art supplier here in, in Europe or Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Netherlands as well. Um, yeah, hope you can see it. Mm -hmm. Katzenzunge, it's called um, the form of, yeah. the, of, the, of the brush. I don't know what, what that is in English, but the direct translation would be cat's tongue. Ah. That's how we call the shape of the brush. Huh. It's very interesting. It's kind of like, like a round shape, but then you have like a very fine tip. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very soft. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks and it cool. holds a lot of a uh, lot of water, as I see here. Yeah, is it a dagger shape though? Because I think the what your yeah, you're right. It's not. Is it? It's a. Is it symmetric or does it like go? It's to not. Mean? It's it's a bit off um off symmetry, actually. Hmm. Yeah. But I think it should be it's symmetric. Speed. Probably I yeah, just. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you said it was a gas decker brush, no? Exactly. Because I'm posting it in the, is it Cosalon or something? What does it say on the brush? Cosalon. 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 Yeah. And it's got a number on and it. It's, it's size number two, mm -hmm. which is size is always important, I think, depending on the format. And it has a number here. If you want to look it up at Gastecker, it's like 58694. Thank I'll you. post that in the chat. It looks very fun and perfect for this wet into wet application. The contrast of the like kind of messy, mixy watercolor application with your really, I wouldn't say like super precise, but super clean and um, purposeful intentional line drawing is such a good combination Getting that counterpoint. Yeah, and you're not super like, I see how the, in the fence, you're not totally in or up to the lines there. It's no. Loose feeling. No. Yeah. I think this, the mixture of, um, won't, be too philosophic here, but um, losing control and keeping control is, is a nice, nice thing to have. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you just let it loose, and then then you get effects you don't unpredictable effects which you can really welcome and work with. And 
then are some parts you want to be super perfect so you be more precise and um, control yourself or the brush or whatever or a lot more so on those two opposites make make an illustration make makes it for me an interesting illustration if you see both definitely um so now it has been about 20 minutes okay so it looks like you're almost done not really but um... <laughs> <laughs> it looks really good though i mean uh, because the colors you're using like it's all it's brown and grayish kind of like but it doesn't look like it could just look like a big blob of gray grayish brownish mud but it's like it's got so much depth and and color and texture i think that's yeah it's like a really masterful way of applying watercolor to not make it all like flow together i don't know it's just the it's really nice texture and pigments uh, could you maybe normally i would i would yeah, go like, into sorry. the sh deep shadows and put some deep shadows into it to have some contrast and work out uh, the contrast a bit more so this is the first wash is always the beginning um to modeling it and then the second step or third step would be um then really modeling the details out with um some some white charcoal or whatever or crayons and having the the darkest darks shine through and um you know emphasize those parts which i will probably add later I think we just had a question there. So um, if you could just ask it again. Uh, that was me. I was actually just going to ask exactly that. Like if you could tell us what what would be the other steps you would still take if you you know had all of the time, but you just basically explained that already. <laughs> so. OK. <laughs> yes. First step is always you know the drawing. And then after the drawing, it's the, the first overall wash with texture and a bit of embossing. And uh, the third step would be the details and the, the emphasizing the, the darks and the, and the lights. And, and would you like add uh, the green like from, from the tree as well? Or would you just leave it as uh, like line work? It's good that, that I have you with me because um, yeah, I did. It, it, I intended to do, but um, I totally forgotten. You're right. But I mean, I mean, it's good like that too. No, no. The intention was really to um, to have a greenish tone in here as well. Mm. So let's do some green. <laughs> you have a very interesting definition of green, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well going, this is first uh, going into blue then you go into brown yeah tell me more about green, green. <laughs> it's all no, relative like this. this is the mean green yeah. oh no, no do you mean the mean green or the evil the mean green? this is the the mean green here okay so it's it, what is it tallow or whatever yeah that's it that's yeah it. okay that's a bit too I, I don't think there's a shade in watercolor that I hate more than phthalo green. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I know some people have great results with it, but like, I hate it I with a passion. I really, I can't get along with it. Sometimes I, I have to really get rid of it out of my, my box because it's just, I don't use it, but it's in there somehow. Yeah, apparently it's a great mixer, but not for me yeah i know it's um i think a palette is always something personal either yes you, you choose what you can what you like and what you can work with and it's your color choices and um another one ha might have a totally different palette which looks great and you can't i i can't really work with it at all so um yeah very subjective and personal
Okay. It looks lovely. I like it a lot. Yes. So it's, I think it's like 50% and um, on a good way, I'd, I reckon. Wow. And it's fun. Of course, it's fun because um, all the textures and um, of those houses. I'm really looking forward to the next house <laughs> you're going to take us to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>